Today, let me show you a really powerful Photoshop trick with which you can use all the raw adjustments locally, just like with masks. As always, you can follow along this tutorial by downloading the raw file from the link in the description and now let's begin. So for this video, we are working with an HDR drone shot. I'm going to start this by changing the profile to Adobe Landscape for a little more saturation and brightness in the darkest parts. Then let's expand the basic panel and we want to adjust the white balance slightly. I do think we can make the whole scene a little colder, introducing some more blue tones right there in the bottom part. So let's bring down the temperature here. And I do think I also want to bring down the tint, just introducing some more warmer tones this way. Okay. Exposure wise, this scene is very, very bright at the top part, especially due to the sun right here. So I want to fix the exposure by bringing it down slightly. I also want to bring down the highlights. The thing here is we can't just bring down the highlights all the way because as you can see, this looks very weird with that way overexposed sun back there. That's the reason for me to just bring it down a notch like that. And I'm going to work with that bright blob up here and later on introduce some glow around this area, which will make this look very, very cool and makes it kind of look intended. At this point, the histogram is looking good, but the darkest areas of the image are still a bit too dark. So how can we fix that? That's pretty easy. Just bring up the shadows. That's looking much better. We could increase the blacks, but for this shot, I don't think it's needed. We will fix things locally later. For the next step, I do want to introduce texture and I want to bring down the clarity and I'm also going to bring down the dehaze just to create some soft look overall. And then let's bring up the vibrance since we want this image to be colorful, as I said. Perfect. That's the image after the base adjustments. Still not that much has changed from before. The colors do look a bit nicer, however, as well as the exposure. Now let's do a bit of masking. And as we do the masking, I will tell you a little bit more about that trick I want to show you later on in this video. So first up, we want to give the main subject of the scene a little more attention. And that's this island right here in the center. How can we do that? That's pretty simple. We are going to create a radial gradient. And let's cover that island like this. I really don't want to cover too much of the water surrounding the island, but this is looking pretty good, I think. Now in here, to make it brighter, I'm just going to bring up the exposure. I'm also going to raise the highlights just a bit, add some contrast. And what I also want to do here is to introduce clarity, which will give us some nice detail in here. Perfect. I also think we can separate the island more from the surrounding water by making it slightly warmer. So let's bring up the temperature. And I think that's about it for now. Then let's create a linear gradient with which I want to cover most of the foreground like this without affecting those highlights up here. And what I want to do with the linear gradient is to just bring up the clarity once more, which will make the river and again the island in the center a little more detailed. So that's looking good. Then let's try to fix that area in the sky. Again, I want to make use of a radial gradient for that. Just create a smaller one like this. I'm going to rotate it and just place it over that bright area. And I'm making sure to overlap the landscape because this will make the glow effect nicely visible. And that's exactly what we want. So to create glow, I'm going to bring up the blacks and this will kind of make the area inside this radial gradient a little more hazy, which works quite nice. And for the same effect, I'm going to bring down the dehaze. I'm going to bring it down quite a lot, which will make the area brighter and thus a little more overexposed, but we really don't need much detail in here. Due to those two adjustments, we did lose a bit of color in here. Let's change that back. So I'm going to introduce some temperature but the more important change will come through that color box right here where we can add a specific color to this radial gradient. Obviously, I am going to aim for a very warm hue somewhere around here. And I think we can further raise the saturation to make the color 
more visible. Perfect. So we're almost done with the masking. Let's create one more linear gradient right there at the bottom part. And what I want to do here is to bring down the exposure to create some kind of vignetting effect right there in the bottom part. And I want to further bring up the contrast, which makes this effect stronger. And then I'm going to create one more linear gradient for the very top part like this. With this linear gradient, I do want to make the top part of the image warmer and just overall give it more color. The simple solution is to bring up the temperature like this. However, in this specific case, this is just not enough. What I would like to do is to apply some split toning, especially to the upper half of the image. However, as you might already know, I don't have the option to apply split toning locally through masks. And this not only counts for split toning, but also the HSL settings with hue, saturation or luminance or the calibration settings. So we are kind of missing out on a lot of things we can do with the masks. However, with this video, I want to show you a workaround how you can do that anyway. Let's finish the masking real quick, however. I also want to add a bit of tint right here and that's it. So we're done with the masking for now. Before we can work with this trick, we want to also do the color grading right here in the raw adjustments first. So let's go through the color mixer real quick. I'm in the hue tab. I want to bring down the blue hue just a bit, giving the water more of a cyan color tone, but it's very, very subtle, of course. Also, I want to head into the saturation tab and I want to bring up orange, yellow, green, aqua, and the blue saturation. Then let's do some overall split toning in the color grading tab here. I just want to work on the highlights, making them slightly stronger. Let's set up the hue to something warm and let's bring up the saturation. All right, that's looking nice so far. Finally, we can head into the calibration tab and I want to bring down the blue primary hue and bring up the saturation here as well. Perfect. So that is the image after the raw adjustments. You can see we quite heavily transformed this image, making it a lot more colorful. However, there are still a few things missing. First, I want to make the sky even warmer and more saturated. And I want to specifically use split toning on the upper area. Also, I want to make the warmer highlights right on that island brighter. Usually, I would go into the color mixer, go into the luminance tab, and here I would bring up the yellow luminance. This nicely affects the foliage on the island, but the problem is this will also blow out the sky even more and even some parts of the river. So let's apply the workaround. First, we want to open this image in Photoshop. Go ahead and duplicate that layer by hitting Ctrl J. For the next step, go into the filter menu. And here we want to choose Camera Raw Filter. This will bring you back in the Camera Raw Editor and here we are going to handle the image like we would just edit it locally. So first off, I want to work on the island. As I said, I'm going to head into the color mixer, go into the luminance tab, and here I'm going to bring up the yellow luminance, giving the foliage on the island more contrast by adding highlights. We could play around with the green luminance as well, maybe like this, and the orange luminance. And we could even head into the saturation tab, just giving them some more saturation like that. Once we're happy, just hit OK. And as you can see, turning off this layer, we affected the image globally. For the next step, let's apply a layer mask. I think I'm just going with a black layer mask, so I'm holding down the Alt key and click on the layer mask icon down here. I'm going to grab the brush tool by pressing B, set the foreground color to white, and then with the white brush, I'm simply going to paint over the areas which I want to change. So I'm just going to brush over all the parts of the island I want to brighten up. Let's also brighten up this area right here. And just like that, we have made use of the HSL adjustments locally on a very specific area of the image without affecting the sky. So next up, let's try something else. I'm going to merge everything by hitting Ctrl Shift Alt E. And again, I'm duplicating this layer by hitting Ctrl J. Then let's work on the sky. Again, I'm heading into the filter menu and choose the camera raw filter. 
This time I want to use some heavy split toning to make the sky more beautiful. So let's go into the color grading tab, choose the highlights and choose a warm color tone, some in that range and bring up the saturation. Now up there in the sky it looks quite good, but I of course don't want to have it in the foreground. So we can make use of the same trick to fix that. Once you're happy with the split toning settings like this, hit OK. Again, apply a layer mask on this layer. I'm holding down the Alt key to create a black layer mask. And then I'm grabbing the brush again, set the foreground color to white, and I'm just going to brush over the sky to introduce more warmth locally. And that's it. Just like that, we applied it locally. Wonderful. And that's pretty much the workaround if you want to apply certain things locally instead of globally. This unfortunately doesn't work with Lightroom. You have to use Photoshop because you need to be able to use layers like this. I hope this was interesting, but we are not done editing this image. I still want to clean it up a little bit. So again, let's merge everything hitting Ctrl Shift Alt E. And I'm going to grab the lasso tool and I want to get rid of that lens flare in the bottom right corner. Just going to make a rough selection, hit Shift F5, choose Content Aware and hit OK. Perfect. Then I'm going to grab the spot healing brush and I just want to get rid of a few things, making the water look a bit cleaner here. Lots of ducks around here. OK, I think we're done editing this shot. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. As always, if you have questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.